A prime example of a divisive and polarizing issue is abortion. Although many people's views on abortion are nuanced, the most visible and passionate opinions are found on two opposite sides. The first thing to notice about this is that it's a case of a general phenomenon. Strong opinions on any issue naturally divide themselves into two opposing camps. This is political polarity. In this dynamic, each side largely defines itself in terms of its opposition to the other side. When this happens, a clear view of the issue at hand is muddied by the felt urge to fight against the enemy and whatever arguments it employs on its behalf. This is clearly manifested in how the opposing abortion camps define themselves. Those who oppose abortion call themselves pro-life, which means that they oppose abortion on the grounds that it means death. The camp opposing them call themselves pro-choice, which means that they are against women having to carry unwanted pregnancies to term. Seems pretty straightforward, but when you feed labels like these into a politically polarized arena, where every word is weaponized, they immediately become misleading. If you consider yourself pro-life, those you oppose are easily painted as anti-life. And in the eyes of those who consider themselves pro-choice, pro-lifers are often seen as anti-choice. The reason this is misleading is because, obviously, pro-choicers aren't motivated by being generally in favor of death, nor are pro-lifers motivated by being generally against people having choices. You can try to recast the pro-life label to be more to the point and call it anti-abortion. But this implies that their opponents are pro-abortion. This is again misleading, because you can be in favor of the right to choose abortion, even if you yourself don't agree with that choice. To hear people who are pro-life talk about the issue, and knowing nothing else about it, you might think that people are being forced to have abortions against their will. That's because pro-lifers tend not to discuss choice at all, as though it's irrelevant to their opinion on the issue. When pro-lifers leave choice out of the question, the issue looks real simple. Unborn babies shouldn't be killed. However, as soon as you allow that in at least some situations abortion might be permissible, you've acknowledged that choice is relevant in at least certain cases. But why just in those cases? And why should you be the one drawing the line? On the other hand, pro-choicers may put themselves in the absurd position of denying facts about what a fetus is, just to avoid accommodating the issue that animates pro-lifers. That makes it look as if you don't even know what abortion is. Each side doesn't seem to want to acknowledge the issue that animates the other side, which just fuels a feedback loop of rage. Each side uses more and more polarizing language in service of its goal to oppose the other, the enemy, the bad guys. Sadly, this is all part and parcel of the dynamic inherent to political polarity. AI researcher and teacher of critical thinking, Eliezer Yudkowsky, has explained this dynamic so nicely that I'm just going to quote him. Politics is an extension of war by other means. Arguments are soldiers. Once you know which side you're on, you must support all arguments of that side and attack all arguments that appear to favor the enemy's side. Otherwise, it's like stabbing your soldiers in the back, providing aid and comfort to the enemy. People who would be level-headed about even-handedly weighing all sides of an issue can suddenly turn into slogan-chanting zombies. When each side seems to exist only to oppose the other, meaningful communication on the issue becomes impossible, because it stops being about the issue and is instead about fighting the enemy by any means possible. Now instead, what if you suppress the urge to automatically contradict everything the other side says just because they're saying it? People who are anti-abortion object to abortion because it ends a human life. No one should have to deny that that's what it is. And circumstances do arise where a pregnant person wants to have an abortion. The possibility of someone choosing to have an abortion is the reason the issue arises in the first place. If you put all this together and avoid vague and euphemistic language on either side, people who are anti-abortion should be able to say something like this. Because abortion is killing a human, no one should have the right to choose to terminate their pregnancy. And if you're pro-choice, your position would be stated as, Although terminating a pregnancy entails killing a human, the person whose pregnancy it is has sole responsibility for it and should be able to terminate it if they choose to. On balance, it's the second of those positions that makes the most sense to me.